Hey, um, hi everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Um, my name is Tara Pereira. I'm the executive director of Vermont Fresh Network. And uh, this is our first of three live streams with uh, Nicole Ferrier from uh, Sugar Feather Farm. Um, and uh, I'm so excited to speak with you today, Nicole. Um, could you tell me a little bit about Sugar Feather Farm? I'm excited to speak with you too. Sure. So we are a heritage breed farm that we specialize in rare, unique, and unusual breeds of turkeys, ducks, guineas, quail, geese, and chickens. Almost forgot yeah. chickens. Yeah. yeah, I see a turkey in the background there. Yes. We let some of the boys out. So <laughs> that's a midget white turkey, the white one. Yeah. And the other two are Narragansetts. Oh, wow. Maybe they'll walk over. They probably will. <laughs> They're curious and friendly. <laughs> so, um, can you? So, how did you get started? Um, you know, with your farm, and you moved here from California, right? Right. Yeah. So, we basically started with just five or six chickens. Um, we got a coop. We've always um, wanted to do chickens. So, coming from California, where it was sunny, seventy degrees. <laughs> I know, very different, radical. Very different. different. Vermont, where. You know, we have four seasons, weather, um, and we really got to connect with nature. And one of like our bucket list items was to have chickens. And then as a family, we just fell in love with them. We would sit with them and hang out with them. And they all have really unique personalities. Yeah, I mean, um, so you were saying that, you know, you're, so family history wise, you hadn't had a farm before. No. Um, and um, this was just something you just got into and became, you just, um, I'm sure you, you picked up, what was the first uh, chicken or um, what was the first one that you started raising? Um, I started raising kind of the typical, like a Rhode Island Red or a Buff Orpington. Um, you know, I went yeah. down to my local feed store, uh, which we didn't have in California. And that was kind of, we were like fascinated that we could actually get birds and bring them home and um, so I, we started kind of with that, and then over time it developed into, like, um, there's so many different kinds of breeds and different types of fowl. So we started with that. I just wanted to show you our, um, our yeah. geese are over here. <laughs> oh, really yeah. I'm curious as well. Um, <laughs> but these are, oop, if I go close, they got to get shy because they have their babies with them. But those oh, are yeah. from geese and Roman tufted geese. And oh, wow. Three babies, yeah. and they're all very, they're very protective of their babies. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, before we talk about some of the other birds, I see you have some little guys next to you and everything. Um, I do. You know, why focus on like heritage breeds? I mean, I find it so interesting. And, you know, you have heritage breeds, you have rare breeds of birds. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. So as um, we started to become involved in it, I started doing a lot of research. I took classes, got quite a bit of education in it. And being an entre entrepreneur type of person, um, it just became fascinating that there's birds that back before we had industrialization were used um, all over the world for you know meat and eggs and all different purposes. And those have kind of gone on the wayside or kind of been forgotten, but they still have a use today which I thought was amazing. And they all have different uses or personalities or different things they do. So some are really good foragers. Some are really good at, um, they lay in the winter. Some are very cold hardy. Some have no, it's called like a standard of perfection. So some have no standard, oh. any color. Um, oh. You know, feather color, any leg type. It's really pretty neat. Oh, so um, look, why don't you show me a little bit? What do you have next to you there? What do we? So, yeah, so here, um, just to see this. So here's like a beginning book on heritage breeds. And we're mm -hmm. members kind of of the Livestock Conservancy. And they're really, um, we're members, like I said, we're members of that. And then there's different levels of heritage or rare breeds that are becoming extinct. So we're kind of one of those breeders um who want to keep going some of these breeds 
and make sure that they survive and really sure. um, let everybody know that they're very useful and you can use these breeds today. So that's an example of, you know, a cool book that you might yeah. read. I have different types of eggs just to show you. Um, is, you know, there's an am amazing diversity. Yeah, so these are actually Cayuga duck eggs. Cayuga is a rare, um, a heritage breed duck. They're all black duck. I don't have any out right here. They're laying on eggs right now, most of them. <laughs> um, and that's like a bluish green. And then this is a turkey egg. So these are either a Narragansett or the Midget Whites. So this is actual, um, the size of a natural heritage breed turkey egg. Wow. Um, this is just a kind of a standard breed egg. If you can see that's gigantic. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. So you're that Narragansett breed, that, uh, that turkey, I don't think it's, I don't know if there's one in the background there, but that's that classic looking, you know, turkey that people see in images when you, you know, when you have like Thanksgiving cards and that classic looking. Right large yeah, bird right and so um most of the breeds we select need to be um very cold hardy can withstand all um, even you know heat all temperatures and they're very hardy birds and that's what i really love about heritage breeds um that over time they adapt to your environment so all birds here are you know adapting to our weather here in vermont which means they can be versatile anywhere so yeah like, um, so the, the Narragansetts are from New England. Um, that's a typical size of a full-grown male. And I don't know, oh. but they're, they're a lot more petite and skinny. So, oh, um, we have a question here. Yeah. Um, Kelly Elwell asks, uh, she says, our mixed flock, ducks, chickens, turkeys, and a mini pig always seem hungry, <laughs> but I think we're feeding them plenty. How much should we be feeding each of them? There's probably like a serving suggestion for them. Um, yeah. It depends also on your feed and the protein you have in the feed. So um, kind of each breed or different type of fowl requires different nutrition levels. So it's possible that they're not getting enough protein and that's maybe mm. hungry. And I, you know, you might want to free feed, um, have food ready, you know, most of the day. I don't have feed at night. That's just my personal preference because of predators um, and right um, mice or rats. So that would be my yeah. suggestion. Check your feed. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay, good. That was, thank you. Yeah. Thanks for the question, Kelly. Yeah, that was great. Now, um, I see you had a couple of little, uh, a cage on the table there of birds. Yeah. So Do you have, like, who are these guys? Yeah. So these are quail and they're called paternics. And they're a little crazy because they're quail and they're kind of on the bottom um, of the food chain in a way. So they're always very, you know, skittish. Um, what's fascinating about quail, I just thought I'd share about them, is that they lay eggs in eight weeks, which is amazing. So they eat quite a bit of food. And this is a sample of their eggs. So, so depending on the type of paternix um, would be the color of the eggs. And this is how big the eggs are. And another really cool fact is that um, you can't get salmonella from these eggs, so you can eat them raw, kind of like oysters. And there's a lot of oh, wow. really neat benefits on quail eggs, and it's all on my website under the quail, and you can read about it there. Sure. Um, and um, there goes the geese. Oh, there goes the geese. <laughs> I have, Something's over there. I have a really Another heritage breed I'm going to bring out. Shannon, okay. That to me. This is my daughter Shannon, one of my farm help. <laughs> so this is called a favorole, and she's on the livestock conservancy list for um, you know uh, a breed that we need to sustain. And I have this little, just so you know, I have this on her because of um, mating. It's, it helps oh, her, yeah. you know, her feather loss for mating. But um, she um, was uh, from France and favorals with an S. So you might see favorable, but favorals with an S. And um, she lays this egg, which is right here. If I can get to it. Kind of slippery. Here's one. So it's kind of this color and, you know, hey, real egg yeah. stuff. 
poop on them. And, That's right. Um, feathered feet, five toes, and um, they're very docile. They're very good in all types of weather. Um, look at, she just lets me hold her. She's super sweet. Like they're a really good family bird. Yeah. yeah. Or so with what, all of these birds, with all of the you know the various types, because I like you said you have their geese. We saw the geese, the turkeys, the uh, quail, ducks, chickens, the various ones. You know, um, I would think it's challenging. They all have different needs and different like housing needs or feed. And how do you? Oh, that's so cute. That little guy. Yeah, that's a Tolbunt Polish. So that's kind of a funky, <laughs> one of my funky breeds. Um, it's a type of Polish and the Tolbunt is the coloring. So it's a unique kind of coloring that is difficult for us breeders to accomplish. Basically. Yeah. That's something we work on. And she's yeah. super sweet. And no, she's, she's little, beautiful. No, she's a little pullet. She's, come here. I'm gonna put her down. <laughs> <laughs> So how do you, like I was saying, like, how do you, I mean, all of them must have different needs of like just housing and how do you just coordinate all of that? What, like what, um, it must be challenging actually, the different sizes, the different um, space needs, that sort of thing. It is definitely. So regarding different sizes, we um, group, you know, chicks or babies in, in a certain area, then maybe the teenagers are in a certain area. And then, um, you know, the ones that are adults are all in their own setup. So as breeders, I have to separate them out by breed and by type. So if it's ducks, they're separated out by type of duck and their ducks are kind of in their own area. And then they require, require different feed or different nutrition, more water, for example, than versus, you know, a chicken. Um, and then my chickens all have different needs. So I have like the smallest chickens in the world right here. Uh, for example, <laughs> they have their own small coop and they, um, they require like a little supplemental heat in the winter just because oh, of okay. the size, for example. And so um, we've got another question here. Sorry oh. to interrupt you there. No, um, so, and this is back to that earlier question. So what are some good sources of protein um, to feed your flock without feeding grain and corn alone? Um, I highly recommend a good quality feed. Um, that's, I think that's the most important for protein because a good quality grain has everything they need developed by, you know, nutritionists that know what they're doing. Um, it depends on if you want to, of course, do, if, if you have them out and they're foraging, they can get, they can get some of their needs met through foraging um whatever they can find you can also do maybe five i do i say yeah. five percent crates um it depends on your setup so if you're you know yeah. doing the farming and grazing that's a whole different conversation but i'll just be kind of general so um if you just have yeah. them roaming around your, your backyard they can get protein maybe from things on the ground or from food scraps um that are not rotten or moldy you want to be careful of toxins and um mm. and you know any of your leftover i give mine leftovers all the time okay. so yeah and and we have two more live streams this week so tomorrow on tuesday um you'll be talking eggs and it's more of a, a kids live stream but then thursday we're going to be having a more of a q a for uh people who have um who currently raise birds or um and answering some of these similar sort of questions on thursday right. um so whatever we don't catch today we can uh, talk about on thursday too um so like you know a feed Tara, so like, oh yeah can you get close awesome. there this is a balanced feed um yeah we actually have our own feed i get custom uh made so um developed by really good nutritionists so um this has the right amount of protein is critical for the right amount, the right age and the right type of fowl. So game birds, this is a game bird. They need different, they need a lot more protein versus a chicken. So. Sure. So what's really surprised you uh, being on this journey, this farm journey? I mean, you raise, you raise these birds for, um, you know, if people want to order, if they want to raise these birds, they can get in contact with you to get the chicks. And how does that process go? Right. So we offer um, 
chicks or babies of all of all the different breeds kind of that I've been sharing and there's more on the website. I, we also offer hatching eggs. So they're fertile eggs that you can put in your own incubator if you would like to try or under a broody hen and a broody hen would be um, one that wants to be a mom and they sit on the eggs for that cycle of, you know, whatever, how many days, 21, 22 for a chicken. And then um, we also offer like the teenagers, so kind of like the grow out. So that that little um, Polish I had up here is a teenager. So we offer those ages. And then we don't usually have any full size because they're all of our <laughs> breeding. You know? So. Yeah. Oh, that's Zeus. He's very curious and he's, um, he's a Roman tufted. And he has some tape on himself because they're explorers and he was ripping tape off and now it's on him. Oh, there you go. There you go. So um, have you, has there been one type of um, poultry or fowl or, you know, has, that's really surprised you, you know, that you've just been like, oh, I love these and I never thought I would, or, or if there's, do you have a favorite? I mean, we talked about the quail, the quail and how quickly they grow and lay, but is there anyone, is there anyone else that su surprised you that, you just really enjoy um, Gosh, that's you know, so raising hard, but I would definitely say the turkeys. Um, yeah. They are friendly. They follow us around. They're extremely hardy birds. They roost um, up high. They like to be outdoors most of the time. You know, they have special, their own requirements. Um, I mean, I, I'm sure you've seen the pictures of me. I, I can hold them. But at the same time, yeah. I give them their respect, you know, and their, their space too. So that's important as well. So yeah. Kind of like yeah. the balance of make, having them feel comfortable, but also I want them to also be predator savvy, you know, as well. Too. Of course. So the turkeys. Um, they're, they're just hanging out there in the back. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and they you know, all the time. And they yeah. show off all the time. So that's actually very normal for them to act They're like subdued that. right now, yeah. just hanging out, yeah. Yeah, that's so, what here. Yeah. What, what do you see for the future of your farm? You know, what are you in the, in like, you're what, two years old? I think the farms, you've had it for about two years. And what's your, you know, what do you, what goals do you have for the, your future goals for the farm? Our, our future goals would be to, you know, I would love to save as many breeds as I can. Yeah. But it takes time to do that and to develop, you know, um, to develop a breed. It takes a while, but definitely sustain the breeds, I would say, um, that are maybe critically endangered so they're not anymore. Um, and then just to have, I love having a variety. Like, I just love the excitement or we love the excitement of it. So really just a place where people can come. Um, they can't go in because for the safety of the birds and biosecurity, yeah. we'll talk about that sometime. Um, but somewhere people can come, feel comfortable, see these breeds. Like, and I mean, it's it, when you see them, it's pretty fascinating to see them in person. Um, yeah. And I love educating. So just describing them and their usefulness and their purpose and the unique, you know, uniqueness of them and their quirkiness. So. Um, it must be different like every day, just a different, every day is just a new, oh new thing with all the different yes. types of birds and personalities. Every day is a, a new adventure There's always <laughs> going on, you know, always, um, whether I hear a hawk outside, I have to run out, a bear, you know, coming to our beehive or, you know, checking out the birds or, um, you know, one of the birds just acting silly, running around, and me just hanging out with them and having some chicken therapy time and duck therapy. Yeah, you know. So um, we're coming up on the end of our, you know, twenty minutes or so. Um, there's, uh, I just want like to thank everyone who's tuned in, um, and that tomorrow, uh, Tuesday, there'll be another live stream at noon with Nicole. You got, you'll be talking about eggs and um, for kids. And then Thursday, you and I will be back, and that'll be more of a Q and A for um, uh, for people who already have birds or a bit or a higher le level discussion. Basically, if they want to introduce heritage breeds into their flock, and um, that'll be that'll be an interesting conversation. Yeah, yeah, and I uh, look forward to tomorrow. And um, you don't just have to be a kid to tune in. 
So it'll just be very um, educational. I think we're talking about egg colors and different kinds of eggs yeah. and why, and um, it'll be a lot of fun. So. No, great. Um, and, um, and also just last um, thing, if anyone has questions for Nicole, they can go to her website, uh, sugar dash uh, feather.com and um you know send her an email with questions but um i guess that's it thank you so much this was so interesting and the turkeys are right behind you stare like they're guarding i love it <laughs> there's always here. <laughs> yes <laughs> all right then till tomorrow okay thank you, thank you. Right. yes bye-bye bye thanks for tuning bye. in buddy